The entire team at the Emsolation Podcast acknowledges the traditional custodians and cultures of the lands and seas on which we live and work. We pay our respects to all First Nations peoples, elders and ancestors. We acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded and stand in solidarity towards a shared future. I personally want to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I record this podcast every week, the Wurundjeri people. I recognise their continued connection to the land and waters of this beautiful place I call home. Always was, always will be. M. Rossiano. Whose dick is swinging where and what are they hitting? And who's swinging it and who's holding it? And Michael Lucas. I think of a very fat white man being covered in animal fat for some sort of roasting procedure. This is M. Salation. And if we are both ever nominated for Best Actress at the Oscars and then I win, <laughs> you will stand in the audience and scream, oh, He doesn't! He doesn't have kids! <laughs> hello, hello, M. Salators. Are you OK? I know you're missing us. But look, we're still giving you a little treat today. We'll be back in full, in earnest, as always, next week. But I couldn't let another Thursday pass without just popping in. How have you been? I uh, am on my second week of a glorious break in Porty D. No one in Port Douglas calls it Porty D. Not that I'm aware of, but I'm trying to start it, make it a thing. So please feel free to work it into your everyday life. I spent the first week on my own. My daughter, Marcelli, your social media captain, joined me for the second half of the week. And my longtime darling, dearest friend, Dan, Disco Dan, Dan Brophy, came for the weekend and we had the most spectacular time. It was like a mini Palm Springs situation. No one in Port D felt that way except us. We, we understand that, but we put on a show. And <laughs> didn't the vibe of the holiday take a shift when my boys, Scott and Elio, arrived on Sunday? <laughs> Holiday's a strong word. It's okay. It's cool. I had my week. I did my eat, pray, love. Just eat, drink, eat, sunbake, repeat. But I was ready to see Elio and just switch straight back into that full-on mothering mode. Also, it's our first holiday that we've really been on together, you know, with he and Scott and I. And his autism is showing up now in all different ways. And I know as kids get older, it, it does that. But also, I guess I'd forgotten we'd been in his safe space with his safe foods and his safe people and... It's been locked down, so we haven't really had to experience Elio in the outside world. And it is a big, raw, real, sometimes overwhelming prospect. My glorious son in an environment that I can't control, let's be honest. (laughs) We went to the beach the second day he was here and he had several meltdowns. It was just, and I should have known better. I blame myself. I didn't think about how overwhelming the sand and and the the people and the the sound of the water and it was hot and there was just a lot of things at play and and I should have managed it better. But, you know, I'm still learning. I'm used to kind of hiding away those things that stress me out and just enduring them or just really being anxious. And he's a three-year-old kid. They don't feel the need to mask and make other people people feel better and I'm glad for that. We got a lot of looks. (sighs) one couple in particular and, and I tried, I, I caught her eye, the, the lady, and, and I said, he's got autism. I'm sorry if he's disturbing you. I'm doing my best. And she just kind of shook her head and looked away and I wanted to go and grab her spiral perm and just say, listen, lady, he's a really amazing kid and you should be so lucky to know him. Just, he's just really overwhelmed right now. I walked away from that beach in tears, both of us in tears, because I'm neurodiverse and the noises that he makes set off my symptoms. And so both of us are just hot messes. And as I walked back with him, carrying him, I realised the enormity of what we have to face and what's ahead of us and figuring out a way for my kid to move in the world that doesn't impact him or other people too much. But um, I've been 
weirdly procrastinating around the NDIS stuff, the National Disability Insurance Scheme. We qualify for it. I've had all the assessments done and I have all the reports ready to go. I just have to contact the NDIS and I've already done the first bit, but I have to now go in with all the assessments and I feel so overwhelmed because I have no executive function. Oh, phone's on, unprofessional. But I'm walking back from that beach and just I'm, I'm vowed I uh, next week I will begin the process. He needs an OT. I need help. I'm a neurodiverse mother with a neurodiverse kid and I don't know what that means and, and I know that I don't have the tools in my belt, which is very hard for me to accept, but I just don't. And he is magic and and I just, I know I should be better at like fuck everyone else. They need to just deal with the fact that I'm doing my best and not eye roll and not judge me. And But I can't. And I, I guess, you know, something I watched this week really resonated with me and triggered me. And I was watching the Jubilee and I saw, as you all probably did, Prince Louis sitting front row. Louis, I think, is around three. He's Kate and William's youngest son. And there's been a lot written about his behaviour. One particularly feisty royal stole the show during the Platinum Jubilee festivities last week. Prince William and Kate Middleton's youngest child, Prince Louis, appeared to be unimpressed during the week's many events and was even caught sassing his mother on Sunday. During the celebration, cameras caught Louis having a tantrum, seemingly because he didn't want to sit quietly and watch the Parade. The four-year-old was spotted making faces at Kate and even attempted to put his hand over her mouth to silence her. At one point, Louis even used a gesture to explicitly taunt his mother. Of course, Kate tried her best to settle the restless child with a smile on her face. However, after the young prince opted to stand on his chair and throw a cushion, Kate decided that it was time to take a break and remove Louis from the event. I was watching it. And I was laughing and, and I was feeling a kinship with Kate. I was seeing a harassed mother just trying with eyes on her, trying to get her very unreasonable toddler to just pipe down. But as we know, the harder we try, they know. And they just go in, they just dig in. And especially Elio's autistic. So if, if he gets a sense that you're trying to change what he wants to happen, no. <laughs> And I'm not saying that Louis is autistic. I'm not pathologizing other people's children. I just noticed a lot of similar things. When Elio wants me to stop speaking, he puts his hand up like Louis was doing. But he also says, Mummy, I'm going to be rude now. Shut up. So look, at least Elio's figured out, you know, he understands the power of an announcement. But I don't know. I, I started seeing all these comments and people judging her and people judging him. And it broke my heart because... Is that not the most relatable thing? It, it doesn't matter that she's royalty. It doesn't matter that she's wealthy. It doesn't matter that she and he are expected to behave in a certain way. No one can, no one can get in the way of a three, four-year-old kid who has decided that they've had it. You know, you may as well lay down next to them. And goodness knows I nearly did that the other day. I'm just so impressed she didn't whip out an iPad because my God, I would have had that thing. I would have had it in front of him and I would have glared down anyone who looked at us in a judgmental way. Thank God for iPads. Thank God. So I guess I just wanted to say the next time you see a child having a meltdown, know that the parent knows or the carer and find out a way you can help. Even if it's just like looking them in the eye and nodding with, with a smile, offering them a coffee, I don't know. But I guess I just... I want things to be easier for me on a selfish level and for my kid. And so I think, you know, anytime I talk about autism online, I notice it's really stingy for a lot of parents with autistic kids. And I say this as a member of the autistic community, I'm getting really tired of the symptom Olympics. If I mention my experience as an autistic person or I mention my son's experience as an autistic person, there seems to be a stacks on from other parents or people who are neurodiverse who want to make sure that I know that their life is worse than mine. And it's just not a race I want to be in. I, I don't want to compare. And if I did, of course, I mean, there it's a spectrum for a reason. And I, I don't compare and I, and, I, and I don't know the experience of a mother with a nonverbal child. I, I don't know that. And so I can't speak to it or on behalf of them. All I can do is speak about my experience but I guess when I'm talking about it online, all I'm looking to do is reassure all of you. I don't, I'm not inviting criticism or judgment 
or for you to let me know I, I'm not allowed to feel that way because your life is so much worse. And it's something that really does happen within the neurodiverse community. A lot of us are, are sensitive perfectionists and competitive. <laughs> it's a toxic mix. Well, that's it. I just wanted to let you know that while I was in Porty D, I felt a kinship with the princess of whatever she is. What is she? The, the duchess of something? Oh, God. I should know this. I do love the royals, although as time goes on, I think perhaps when it is the Queen's time, I may retire my love for the monarchy. She reminds me of my grandmother and no amount of anything will take that away from me. My nana worshipped her. My nana left me in her will a commemorative Charles and I plate. So I will forever hold a very special place for Queen Lizzie. All right, that's enough from me. I'm going back to my holiday in inverted commas. <laughs> When I go on holiday, I just want to like lay down and be still, but my husband needs entertaining like a child. We have to have activities. I'm desperately trying to convince him to go snorkeling for the day tomorrow. <laughs> Please, if you see pictures of him snorkeling, no, I've won. Next up, you're going to hear Michael Lucas, who went to the Melbourne premiere of Elvis, the Baz Luhrmann Spectacular. It's been getting mixed reviews. Look, you know that Michael worked for Baz and met his husband at Baz Mark and He'll be conflicted on how he portrays the movie. Uh, you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> Either way, I know it's going to be a camp mess. I haven't seen it, so I'm all for it. But I'm interested to hear what Michael has to say. And I want to remind you to please vote, 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 vote for Michael's show, The Newsreader, at The Logies. The Logies are a week away, Sunday week. So please, if you haven't done so, go and vote now for all the categories that the news reader is nominated in, and there's a lot. Most popular drama, most outstanding drama, best actress, best supporting actor, best actor. Like, there's a lot. Just go and vote. We want him to win. And also vote for M Melissa Leung for the gold. Wouldn't it be lovely? Wouldn't it just be an awesome thing to see? Oh, God, I hope she wins. All right, Emsolators, we'll be back next week. I miss you. I hope you're well. Enjoy Michael's review, and we'll chat soon. Bye. M. Rossiano and Michael Lucas. This is, 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 is M. Salation. There's a lot of people saying a lot of things. But in the end, you got to listen to yourself. In that moment, Elvis the man was sacrificed. And Elvis the god was born. Okay, post Elvis premiere. I've just got back and the first thing I have to say is, without question, um, do not have multiple drinks before going in. I had three champagnes, it was the premiere. That came back to haunt me about an hour and a half in. But, of course, I was not leaving that cinema. <laughs> and God, I mean, look, it is exhilarating. It is, Baz is, he is not toning it down. All I can say is, I hope you like a montage. I hope you like a montage that goes in and out of newspapers spitting and that has period music going into rap. It's all of that. It's, it's Baz on crack. I was not familiar with Elvis that much going in. I mean, I mean, obviously I was with the iconic things, but I, I didn't, I basically knew that he, uh, yeah, he, he died on the toilet, which unfortunately was not depicted. Uh, spoiler alert. But all I can say is Austin Butler, that guy that plays Elvis, what a find. To think he was doing his own singing every time it cuts to one of his performances, I, I would pay $1,000 to go and watch him perform as Elvis in some sort of tribute show. He's incredible and also intensely attractive. Like, personally, I find him more attractive than the real Elvis. Just, just amazing. It's also a feast of there's so many Aussie actors that pop up. It's incredible, incredible to think that it was all, it was all made here in Australia. Look, I, <laughs> I was electrified. I am exhausted. I feel like I have come off a five-year Elvis residency having watched the show. But you know you've got to see it. I mean, you're going to fall in love with Austin Butler and then come back and watch all the clips on YouTube of Elvis. Why didn't they do a Jailhouse Rock sequence? That's my only question. Could they not get the rights? These are all very random thoughts. But overall, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm exhausted. And I just can't wait to hear what everyone thinks. This is Emsolation. 
Emsolation with M. Rossiano is a Spotify exclusive podcast recorded at Down the Hill Studios, hosted by M. Rossiano with Michael Lucas, executive produced by Benjamin Wosley, produced by M. Rossiano, edited by Ezekiel Fenn at Entente Music, with videos by James Henderson, socials by Marcella Rossiano Barrow, with assistance from Jem Evans and Georgia Watts, plus occasional off for shelf installs and flat pack wrangling from M's dad, Vincy. Get more m by following us on Instagram at m Podcast. You can also sign up for our weekly newsletter. Join other m at the m group on Facebook. The answer is Harry Styles. And please take the time to share this podcast with a friend and make sure you're following us on the Spotify app by hitting the follow button. Thanks again for taking time out to listen to this week's episode and we look forward to chatting with you again soon. Soon.